Very good. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, the invitation. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that we have already heard a lot of great talks in this workshop. So today I'm going to talk about something very simple as usual. Okay, so I'm going to talk about non-stochastic multiplayer multi bandits, And this is a joint work with Seb, Mark, and Yua. Okay, so what is multi arm bandit problem? I'm sure like everybody here knows what is multi arm bandit. It's just a very simple model to make, uh, to model how to make sequential decisions online. Okay, so there are all these arms and then there's a player. Okay, so uh, uh, just to introduce some notation, we assume that there are K arms and then there are T rounds. So at each round T, the player will pick a specific action from these K arms and then it will observe a reward from zero to one. Okay, so observe some bounded reward. And of course the goal of the player is just to maximize the accumulated reward in this very simple multi arm bandit problem. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to talk about a slightly different question, which is what if there are multiple players playing in the same environment? Okay, so in standard multi arm bandit, there is just one single player who makes the uh, action at every iteration. But what if there are multiple players and making decisions at the same time, in particular, in the same environment? Okay, so what if there are two players like this and they both have the, uh, the same set of arms, okay? And they want to pick actions simultaneously, okay? So the central issue is that typically, I mean, when you have this setting and you have rewards on each arm, and typically when two players pick the same action at the same round, they are only being able to get one piece of reward in total, or even worse, they will get even fewer reward due to a collision, okay? Just think of, I mean, just think of buying some lottery, okay? The, if the two players bought the same lottery number, then of course they are going to share the reward, okay? So there's no two, uh, pieces of the reward, it's only one single piece, okay? Just to say mathematically, when player A picks an action AT and player B picks an action BT, and when AT and BT is equal to the same action, they will only be able to get a total reward RT of A instead of the summation of these two, okay? If they pick different arms, then of course they can collect uh, the uh, overall rewards, but if they pick the same arm, Okay, they can only get one piece of reward or even worse, okay? So what is the uh, motivation of this environment? The first motivation is the cognitive radio networks. And uh, this is actually the first, uh, this is actually where uh, the multiplayer multi-arm bandit was first introduced, okay? It's just to model the cognitive radio networks Okay, there are, in these networks, there are a lot of users, like user one, user two, user three, okay, and they want to sign some radio, okay, and then there are some underlying channels, maybe like a hundred channels, okay, and the users want to sign their signals through some channel, okay, and so the point is some channels are faster, some are slower, and the users say they are greedy, they want to use the fastest or the best channel and use it, okay? But the problem is if two users rush to the same channel at the same time, they both get delayed, okay? And maybe just because there is even a collision, they cannot even send the message, okay? So not only they are not getting the rewards, they are actually getting punished if, they have, if there is a collision, okay? So basically the central issue here is instead of the one player setting, if you have multi-players, the players have to learn, the players are greedy, they want to figure out which channels are better, but then there are also competitions among the players, okay? If all the players are very greedy, then they may just rush to the leading channel and they all get delayed, okay? So it's, uh, basically, the challenge here is fundamentally different from single player setting. Okay, in single player setting, you just want to selfishly maximize your reward. But here, if everybody just selfishly maximize their own reward, they may actually become very bad. Okay, just because they rush to the leading channel and they all get punished. Okay, 
So in particular, here, I mean, the players, they want to, they want to learn what is a bad channel, but they also want to uh, kind of collaborate to distribute their actions across different channels, okay? And also another motivation is this is the most preliminary framework to study multi-agent learning system, okay? So in multi-agent learning system, of course, the collaboration is the key. Okay, how does these learners collaborate while they are learning? And here you can see that they definitely need to collaborate in order to avoid uh, rushing to the same arm at the same iteration, okay? So basically, uh, here is a multiplayer, multi-arm bandit setting, and we see that the main difficulty here is the competition, okay? The players want to avoid picking the same action at the same time. Okay, so this is the most basic model for collaboration. Of course, you can think of other models where uh, like, for example, picking the same arm is actually encouraged, but that's out of the scope of this work. Okay, so we consider the most basic setting where in this setting to maximize the total accumulated reward among all the players, it is important that all the players pick the different actions at the same run. Okay, so the players, if the two players pick the same action at the same round, they will always get a worse reward comparing to if they pick different actions, okay? So basically picking the same, uh, picking different actions is the key here to maximize the reward, okay? So basically uh, if the players do pick different actions at the same round, we call this a no collision strategy. Okay, so no player speaks the same action at the same iteration. Okay, then there is no collision. So we call this a no collision strategy. And we define the associate no collision strategy or the regret for the no collision strategy for the M players, multi-arm, multi-player, multi-arm bandit is essentially the maximal actions that the player can do on the hand side minus like whatever the players actually achieve in the, uh, in the entire game, okay? So here, a t of i is the action of player i at time t, okay? And we assume that there is no collision. So a t of i is not equal to a t of j for every player i and j that are not equal, okay? So at the same time, each player has to pick different arms, okay? So we call this a no collision strategy. So the players have to distribute their, uh, their, their peaks along different arms, okay? And also they want to maximize the total accumulated reward. So basically they want to learn, okay? They want to learn in this, in this environment to maximize the reward. And also they want to collaborate, okay? So there are just two goals in multiplayer, multi-arm bandit, okay? There, there's the goal of learning and then there's the goal of collaboration to avoid collision, okay? So that's a problem that we are we study in this work, okay? And the central question is, can we get low regret algorithm without collisions? Okay, that's a question we ask in this work and we will give some answer for this question, okay? Okay, cool. So basically just to illustrate, there might be some very simple strategy to get uh, low regret. Uh, to get low, re uh, low regret without any collision, okay? So this is a very simple strategy, assuming that you have a central server and the central server is going to select a subset of size M using, for example, multiplicative weight update at every iteration. And then they just communicate with the players about this set as, as he, and the, the players just pick actions in as he, okay? So players distribute the actions, they communicate and to avoid collisions, and then they just communicate back the reward to the server, okay? So there's very simple strategy to achieve low regret, okay? So just to achieve low regret and collaboration itself is very, very simple, okay? But what is wrong with this simple strategy? Well, the simple strategy has a main problem, which is the strategy actually requires the player to communicate at every iteration. Okay, so the players, essentially they need to sit in the same room or they're in the same Zoom call in order to communicate. Okay, and they need to communicate at every iteration. 
because they need to collaborate at every iteration to avoid collision. Okay, so basically using this simple strategy, you have no regret, you have no collision, but the total B of communication is omega of T. Okay, but the communication cost is very high. Okay, just like in the cognitive radio network, the goal is to communicate. I mean, if the players, they can communicate, then why, why do they need cognitive radio networks at all? Okay, so the, the entire goal is to, to communicate for these applications. So the communication cost is something you don't want to pay, okay? So basically uh, that's motivates the, uh, the real problem that consider in our work, which is can we actually get a low regret algorithm without collision and with very limited communication cost or rather there's no communication cost at all, okay? So can you still have low regret? Uh, can you still have low regret and no collision and minimize the amount of communication? Okay, so you don't want to communicate with others to collaborate at every iteration. In that way, although you can get no collision, you can have low regret, but the communication cost is very high, okay? Just impractical in those applications like the edge device or all these multi-agent learning system. I mean, you have all these edge device distributed across the world, of course the communication cost is the real budget, okay? So just to say the communication cost is very high, okay? The uh, communication is money that we don't want to pay, okay? So basically the central question we ask in our work is that can we get low regret algorithm without collision and with smaller amounts of communication costs? Okay, so the player wants to learn and the players want to uh, collaborate, but they don't want to communicate. Okay, so how do, do the players learn and collaborate without communication? That's what we are going to study in this work, okay? So also just a note that we, we assume that we, we need to implement a strategy without any collision. Okay, this is actually a stronger version of the setting where players can collide, but there is no collision information. Okay, so the players get punished when there is a collision, but they don't know whether the low reward is due to a collision or just this arm is bad, okay? So maybe two players rush to the, to the same arm and then they both get delayed, but they don't know if the delay is due to a collision or is due to there is another player, okay? So of course in our setting, this is our setting is, is a stronger version than that because we have no collision at all, okay? So the players doesn't even collide. So even if you have no collision information, it doesn't affect me because I have no collision, okay? And our setting implies low regret algorithm there is, when there is no collision information, but the players can collide because in our setting, the players don't even collide. Okay, so it's a stronger version. And also our setting implies low regret, no communication algorithm when there is collision information because our algorithm has no collision. So you can actually use the collision information to communicate, okay? because the original algorithm has no collision. So the uh, additional collision must be due to some communication protocol uh, that is implemented on top of our algorithm, okay? So just to say our setting is general and it implies all these uh, versions that you may consider in practice, but our setting is the most general one, okay? So what is the prior works in this setting? Well, the, most of the prior works focus on the case when there is stochastic setting, okay? When the reward of each arm at iteration T follows from the same distribution, okay? So the environments are not changing over time. It just, you get some stochastic observation at every iteration, but the stochasticity remains the same, okay? There are a bunch of works. You can see the citation in our paper, but not going to elaborate that. So all of them focus on the stochastic setting. And, but just to say in multiplayer, multi-arm bandit settings such as cognitive radio networks, the underlying environment is obviously changing over time. Okay, so it's affected by the weather, by the uh, electrical condition or some other like magnetic conditions, whatever, it's definitely changing over time. Okay, 
So the channels just may become faster or slower at different times. They are not stationary, okay? They are actually changing over time and you really want to learn uh, from this changing environment, okay? So in our work, we actually focus on the harder non-stationary setting, also known as oblivious adversarial setting. Okay, so this underlying environment is definitely changing over time. Okay. And the non-stationary setting is fundamentally different from stationary setting due to the fundamental dilemma. Okay. So for non-stationary material bandy setting, even for a single player, it is known that the player has to constantly perform in exploration and cannot stick to some fixed action. Okay. Just like in this picture, the player has to switch the arm very frequently in non-stationary setting because the environment is changing over time. If it stays at a fixed arm, then it cannot adapt to the changing environment, okay? So it's not like in stationary environment when you identify a subset of best arms, then you can stay there, okay? In non-stationary environment, you cannot play something stationary. Okay? You have to change actions very frequently, but and now there is a fundamental difficulty, which is a player, if the players do not communicate, so how do they collaborate to make sure that there is no collision? If they are all changing rapidly and they have no communication, okay, then how do they even collaborate? Okay. So in particular, in fact, by the seminal work by Offer Deco et al., it is known that in non-stationary multi arm bandit, Omega T switches is necessary to obtain root T regret. Okay, so obtain the traditional root T regret, you need Omega T switches. Okay, so it's, it's non-stationary at all. Okay, you have to constantly switch. Okay, so it's not even like T to the two thirds switches. It's like to obtain root T optimal regret, you have to switch almost every iteration. Okay, just a non-stationary at all. Okay, or T to the two thirds switches is necessary to obtain the T to the two third regret. Okay, so just to say in non stationary setting, switching is necessary. Okay, you have to make constant switches. So, I mean, then there is the fundamental challenge that is all the players are switching and they don't communicate. How do they avoid collision? I mean, they are all switching at every iteration and they don't communicate. Who knows who goes to where? Okay, so it seems like to avoid collision and to obtain order of root T regret, omega T Bs of communication is necessary between the players. Okay, just by this seminal result, you have to switch at almost every iteration and since there are multiple players, you have to know like whether player A goes to that arm or not. And player A's are switching like crazy. So you must be able to do that. Okay, so this sounds like you must communicate omega T bits of information. Okay, so that's why the preliminary works all focus on stationary setting because people don't even believe that in non-stationary setting, uh, less, than, less than order T communication is possible. Okay, just by this result. Okay, intuitively it doesn't sound like it's possible. Okay, but actually in this work, we show the following result. That is, there is an efficient root T regret algorithm without collision and with only root T bits of total communication, okay? So you can actually reduce the communication cost from T to root T, okay? And moreover, there is an efficient T to the two third regret algorithm without collision and without any communication, okay? So you can still get low regret algorithm even without any uh, communication and without any collision. Okay, so you have no information from other players at all. Okay, so even if you have, uh, so even if, I mean, even if you are able to have some collision information, I mean, in our setting, there is even no collision at all between the players. Okay, so they don't even communicate at all. Okay, but still low regret is possible. Okay, so that's our work. And in the remaining uh, 10 Yandu, minutes, we Yandu. shall give you an idea of the algorithm in the two player case. Okay, there's player Seb and then there's player Mark. Okay, so Yandu, play, player Seb wants to say something. First. 
So the main idea for the first result is that SAB will use a low switching strategy. Clear, SAB is not going to say anything. Uh, are there can, any can, Yes, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I mean, not, not a question, but just can you uh, uh, say something about shared randomness just so that, because otherwise it's really, really mystifying. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm going to say that later. Okay, all right. Yeah, so basically what happened is that the player SAB uh, it will uses a low switching strategy that only switch arms approximately every root t iterations. Okay, so basically what happens is when Seb, player Seb switches the arm, he is going to tell player Mark which arm he is going to pick. Okay, and then the player Mark plays on the remaining set of arms, and obviously there will be no collision because player Mark knows which arm player Seb is going. To peak and it stays on the remaining set of arms, okay? So the player set uses a low switching strategy and of course only root T bits of communication is needed because it only switch arms approximately every root T iteration, okay? So only root T bits of communication is needed because it only switch arm root T times, okay? So just like in this setting, the player set, you know, player set is a boss, so he stays constant and player mark is the inter, so he do, does the uh, exploration on the remaining side of arms, okay? But so here, this just naive implementation of this strategy has a pretty big problem, which is if player set uses a low switching strategy that only switch arms approximately root iteration, how does he know which arm is good? I mean, as we have seen in the non-stationary setting, like T switches is necessary to achieve root T regret. But SAB only switch arms root T times. So obviously like uh, if, if there's SAB alone, he cannot really achieve root T regret. Okay, so how does he have enough exploration on the other arms? Okay, then here is our very simple idea that is player Mark actually does exploration on the remaining set of arms. Okay, so when player SAB decides to switch arm, Play Mark is going to tell Seb about the estimated accumulated reward on all the other arms. Okay, so basically, uh, player Seb, when uh, player player Mark doesn't play on the purple arm, so player Seb is going to tell player Mark the reward of the purple arm, and player Mark is going to tell player Seb the accumulated or estimated accumulated reward on all the other arms. Okay. So basically, in this, in this case, I mean, they both have uh, sufficient observation and they can actually achieve uh, root T regret with only root T bits of communication, okay? So basically, this algorithm is very simple, okay? It's, it's a very easy algorithm, okay? And uh, so basically, with root T bits of communication, it's pretty easy, okay? And also with root T bits of communication, you can also use pseudo random generator to send shared random strings. Okay, that's not a problem. But Yonju, what if you want to maybe maybe just for the experts in the room, we should tell them that the the variance calculation is not as easy as you make it sound. And, and there is, I mean, it's not that easy. Like the uh, basic yeah. idea is I mean the very, exact very uh, result is not that easy, but I mean, the spirit is very easy. So the that's why is very easy. Uh, it's easy uh, in my standard, okay? So <laughs> okay. Uh, basically this is, this is not hard to imagine that this is doable, although the detailed implementation may be a bit tricky, but it's this imaginable that it's easy, okay? But what if the players cannot pass any information, okay? What if there's no communication at all? So they cannot exchange their history and they cannot know where the players lies in each iteration. Okay, so what if there's no communication at all? In this case, even Seb is playing a low switching strategy. He cannot tell player Mark which arm he lands. Okay, so what, what can we do in this setting? It sounds like in this setting, the challenge is fundamentally different. And it sounds like low regret is very hard, okay, because I mean, even Seb is switching very slowly, player Mark doesn't know which arm Seb likes, okay? And of course, there's no collision at all, so it's, it's very, very tricky, okay? So we will actually show that they can still achieve T to the two-third regret without any communication, 
Okay, so they can collaborate without communicating. Of course, in this setting, we assume that they have some shared random source. Okay, so they are they can have access to some shared random screen that is shared there. Okay, it's a, it's a it's like shared in the public. It's like they have the observation. I mean, they maybe have some observation of the current time. Okay, and then they can use this as a seed to generate pseudo random screens. Okay, so they have some shared like pseudo random source. Okay, that's our assumption. Okay. So let's us illustrate the algorithm in the two player setting again, player Seb and player Mark. Okay. So the main uh, intuition is uh, the following thought experiment is that what if we are actually in the full information setting? Well, in this setting, the player Mark and player Seb can actually use the follow the perturbed leader strategy okay, using a shared random permutation. Okay. So what would they do is that the player Seb and player Arm can agree on a prescribed order before the game begins, which is like player Seb is a boss, so he always picks the best arm, okay, after perturbation. And player Mark always picks the second best arm, okay, after perturbation. And the key observation is that in full information setting, Seb and Mark observe the same reward sequence. So they have no collision because they agree on what is the best perturbed arm and the second best perturbed arm, okay? So they will always agree and they will always have no collision and they will actually have low regret because follow the perturbed leader works in this setting, okay? So it's very simple if you are actually at full information setting with a shared random screen, screen then you don't need communication, okay? Just uh, just like, uh, just, I mean, use this prescribed order and then the player side and the arm can avoid collision while achieving low regret, okay? But here, the main difficulty is what they are actually in bandit setting in our case, okay? They are only having partial observations and also their observations must be different due to no collision because they cannot even observe the reward in the same arm at the same iteration. Okay, so their law sequence must be completely different. Okay, so in this setting, actually, I mean, since I'm running out of time, I'm going to sketch it very fast. Okay, so in this setting, actually, what you can do is uh, you can suffer a regret t to the two third to make sure that the loss estimator of player sub and player mark only differs by a factor of t to the two third. Okay. So basically you suffer from a uh, suffer a regret of t to the two third just by exploration at a fixed rate t to the minus one third. Okay, and then by some simple concentration bound, you can make sure that the reward estimators are always differ by just a factor of t to the two third. Okay. So basically now the question is, can we make sure? I mean, if we are willing to pay a regret of t to the two third can we actually make sure that the players have no collision while their loss estimator or their reward estimators differ just by a factor of t to the two third, okay? So you may think maybe I can still use follow the perturbed leader. That's not true, okay? Follow the perturbed leader will be horrible in this case, even if you have a, even if you wish to suffer a regret of t to the two third, the perturbation will be off size t to the two third, okay? But, the estimator also just differ by t to the two third. So you may have constant collisions. Okay, so you have, you, you may have very high chance to collide if you use follow the perturbed leader. Okay, so what we are actually going to do is the so-called follow the soft perturbed leader. Okay, which is uh, something like, essentially you assign the probability to each uh, action that you want to so essentially you have, you want to simulate the central server uh, scenario where the central server has a joint probability on the both actions, okay? The, on uh, actions that are different, okay? And they want, they want to simulate the central strategy on their end, okay? So what happens is that they will compute something like a probability of picking arm A, which defines in this formula, okay? And the main observation is that if the player can pick arms according to this margin probability and without any collision, then this is a low regret algorithm, okay? Because PAB times LA plus LB is actually equal to PA times LT of A, okay? 
So this is a low regret algorithm. If you can, two players can keep the margin probability and avoid collision, okay? So how do the two players keep the margin probability to, and avoid collision? Well, they just put the probability on a circle, okay? So they just put probability one on the circle of arm one on the circle, probability of arm two on the circle, okay? And the player side is going to pick uh, the action according to a random variable S. Okay, in this case, Seb will going to pick arm two, and Mark is going to pick according to uh, the arm that is pointing by negative S. Okay, so S and negative S are on two sides of the circle. Okay, so uh, basically the main observation in this case is that actually every probability has weights smaller or equal to a half. Okay, if you have a collision, it seems it must be like some probability has weight close to a half, so they both uh, lie in the same probability, okay? And also they are kind of Lipschitz, okay? So in these settings, they can actually avoid collision, okay? So this is a, a strategy. There is a allocation strategy and the players can actually avoid collision using some shared randomness, okay? And just at the end, we say, we mentioned an open problem that is, can we have low regret algorithm without collision information, without collisions, without communication, and without shared randomness? Okay, just without anything, can we get a low regret algorithm? And we believe that this is impossible unless the reward is zero one and you have, you get zero when there is a collision. Okay, so you have semi information because you know when you get reward one, there is no collision. And we do know how to solve the problem without collision, without collision uh, information, without communication, and without shared randomness in this case. But in general, we conjecture this is impossible. Okay, and that's the end of my talk. Thanks. Thanks, Yonju. Uh, do we have a quick question? Uh, I have a question. I'm, yes. I'm just trying to understand the circle, the two circles that you drew. Uh, I, I didn't quite catch that argument over there. So actually, I, this this is a an excellent question, but the answer is not that easy. So I think this will be a perfect topic for the discussion. Uh, so maybe let's keep that question of re-explaining what's happening with the circles to the to the discussion. I think it, it's a very good question, but it will take more than one minute to answer. Okay. Um, Okay, let's move on to the next talk and then we can ask all the 